We talked about adiabatic quantum computation as a way to exploit a phenomenon known as the adiabatic theorem to perform universal quantum calculations. We can also do something slightly different. Adiabatic quantum computation is, is somewhat idealized. And a less idealized version is quantum annealing. So if you remember to get the speed limit right when you, when you perform the adiabatic transition, the annealing, you have to respect uh, the gap and the minimum gap that you experience on all the Hamiltonians that you transition through. This is very hard to calculate. So the speed limit is intrinsically hard to get. So instead what you can do is just anneal over and over again. Say, anneal a thousand times. It doesn't take long, it takes maybe 50 milliseconds. And then you can pull out these thousand different configurations and look at the energy levels and pick the one with the lowest energy. So this does not give you any guarantee that this is going to be the ground state and the global optimum for your problem, but this might give you a better solution than what, say, a classical heuristic algorithm would give you. And there's some work going on where you can uh, bound how far you are from the actual solution by using some fast classical heuristics, and then you will get an idea whether you are in the ground state or whether you are actually close to it. So in principle, this model works very well. And then, if you want to perform universal calculations, you must have both sigma z interactions, like between the sigma z operators, and also between sigma x operators. This is, again, something difficult uh, to achieve. So if you resort to just solving the classicalizing model, then you can solve these quadratic unconstrained binary optimization problems, QBOS, which are NP-hard, so there's value in solving specific operations as opposed to solving a much harder problem that, is, that allows you to, uh, to perform universal calculations. Then there are all sorts of experimental conditions that you face. For instance, uh, there is a 2000 qubit quantum annealer implemented by D-Wave Systems. This is a superconducting architecture, which means that you have to cool it down to about 10 millikelvin or so. And, but that's not absolute zero. So you are operating at finite temperature, which means that, you know, in principle, you, you even don't, you, it might happen that you don't even get the ground state to begin with. And there's a higher chance of jumping out of it as you perform the transition. And then there is this problem that the, 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 the electronic control that goes into the actual quantum chip interferes with the calculations. So the machine itself uh, sits in a big box, which is a Faraday cage. It shields the device from external electromagnetic radiation, but the classical electronic circuit itself introduces some noise in the system. So these are intrinsic engineering challenges, which will interfere with your actual calculations. Yet, this is a very interesting model, and you can get very interesting calculations by performing a repeated annealing round. So we talked about the software stack for gate model quantum computers. So let's take a look at how it works for quantum annealing. So we can start again with the problem definition. For instance, we can address the same problem, the tra traveling salesman problem. We have to visit n cities and choosing the shortest possible way of visiting all of them. Then it easily maps to an optimization, a quadratic binary optimization problem. So that's intrinsically an IZ model. So this is easy to do. And then what we have to do is, is something called a minor embedding. So this was this step corresponds to, to the compilation in the gate model architecture. So in compilation, several things are going on. First of all, you map from some gate sets that you define in a circuit to the actual hardware, and then you also factor in the constraints of your architecture. For instance, if two qubits are not connected and you, you want to interact with uh, the two, then the comp uh, compiler has to do something to allow for that interaction. And when it comes to minor embedding in, in an annealer, what can happen is that your qubits may not be fully connected. For instance, in this 2000 qubit uh, architecture, you have these unit cells consisting of eight qubits. And 
four qubits are fully connected between these two sides. And then each one of these qubits have longer range interactions to the, to the next unit cell, which is the same thing as writing this graph and having uh, these long range connections to, to the neighboring uh, unit cells. So you have, your problem has some intrinsic connectivity structure. And then this minor embedding, this graph minor embedding, is what embeds it in what the hardware actually provides. And then you can map it to the QPU and run your annealing over and over again in just a couple of milliseconds. So to be more specific, imagine that you have this problem. So you want to find uh, the minimum energy configuration of sigma 1 times sigma 2 plus sigma 2 times sigma 3 plus sigma 1 times sigma 3. If, if you write down what's the connectivity structure of this, it's actually a K3. So here you would have sigma 1 interacting with sigma 2. Then you have sigma 2 interacting with sigma 3. And finally, you have sigma 1 interacting with sigma 3. Now, if you look at this graph, there is no K3. This is a complete graph on three nodes. So what you do is, for instance, this would correspond to your, lo your logical variable sigma 1. That's fine. This corresponds to sigma 2. That's also fine because they, they interact, so they are connected to each other. And now you can create another logical variable by combining these two physical qubits. So these two would uh, act as a one logical qubit, sigma 3, and you increase the coupling here to make sure that these two physical qubits always have the same value to represent the same logical qubit. So you introduce a strong coupling here as a way to mimic the connectivity structure that you are looking for. So this task in itself is hard, so you use probabilistic methods to embed the problem that you have on the hardware. But once you do that, quantum annealing is an interesting and a straightforward thing to do on your optimization problem.